on this episode of Africans in Sports. Turning his Akin Yodi! Soccer is a huge part of the Nigerian culture. I mean, that's the biggest sport there. Would you say that Nigerian Nigeria is better at soccer? Oh yeah. For me, I always get to argue with my friends and all my teammates are American. I'm like, yo, we're way better than you guys. <laughs> What's it like being released when you sit down with the GM and he tells you we no longer need your services? Yo, anymore? it is it's probably the toughest feeling in the world. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Africans in Sports. Today, we're in Nashville, Tennessee to sit down with Nigerian-born American soccer player, Bolu Akinyode. Yes, sir. Bolu, yeah. what's good, boy? How's it going, man? How I'm good, you? man. How are you? Good, 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 you know. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. How you like Nashville, bro? It's a cool city. Yeah. Um, honestly, I didn't know what to expect when I first moved here. Uh, it's different. Grew up in New York. Um, but yeah, I moved here and it's been it's been a dope city. It's definitely a southern feel to it for sure. Yeah? yeah. That's what's up, man. You see me, I'm timmed up. Yeah. So I got, I got the New York in me everywhere I go too. So <laughs> I'm hyped for this right here. Yes, sir. Yeah. I want to take you back home. Mm. All the way home though. Yeah. Lagos, Nigeria. Yeah. Tell me about that. What's it like growing up there? Yeah, it's a different world. I mean, it's it's similar to New York. You get the hustle and bustle and everything, and the yeah. city's quick and it's fast. There's a lot of hustling going on, but um, definitely has some good memories, some fun memories growing up there, running around in the streets and mm -hmm. playing soccer with no shoes and the whole nine. Every time I sit down with the Nigerian, they tell me that we're, we're prideful and we do it big. Like, what does that mean for you coming from that place? Oh, yeah. Everything we do, it, it feels like if you're Nigerian and you, whatever you do, whatever your pro pro profession, whether if you're a doctor, you're an athlete, whatever you do, you take your culture with you. Mm -hmm. And it feels like, it almost feels like you got the whole country on your back or like you got to support your whole country, whatever you do. It's not just you. You, you see our names and whenever people look at our names or just spell our names, they can tell like, oh, you're Nigerian. Yeah. So there's a different sense of pride that comes with that and whatever you do. So that's just, whatever we do, we do it big, essentially. I like that. Yeah. Speaking of your name, what does your name mean? So my name means how God wants it. Funny story behind it, um, I have two older brothers. Mm -hmm. So when my mom had me, she didn't want to have a third boy. She really wanted a girl, so she thought I was going to be a girl coming out. And my pops thought I was going to be a girl. And when he walked in, he walked in, obviously, I was a boy. So he was like, that's how God wants it. God's, God wants me to have three boys. So my name translates to that's how God wants it or God's will in Yoruba. I like that. Yeah. How do you translate that? How do you, like, work that into your life? I mean, for me personally, I've been through a lot. Um, getting to where I've gotten now, everything wasn't so straightforward and wasn't so easy. So whenever I'm in a situation, for me, it's like, you're supposed to be here. God wants you to be here. And whenever a door opens or whatever the case may be, that's always been kind of like my motto is like, I'm here for a reason. So just make, make the most of whatever opportunity you get. Okay. So you grow up, you got two other siblings, mm -hmm. your mom and your dad in the house. Yeah. Well, no, my dad passed away when I was younger. It was just my mom. Oh man, I'm sorry yeah. to hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So good. Man, so you got mom, two mm -hmm. brothers. I got, so well, uh, my family's kind of all over the place. Uh -huh. Moved here with, it was me, my older brother, and my younger sister. Mm -hmm. My oldest brother, he grew up in London with my aunt. Ah. So he lived in London, but he would come visit us every now and then. But he didn't move here with us. Okay. Um, so it was me, my older brother, and my younger sister, and my mom, pretty much. What's that dynamic like? Do you guys, did you guys keep all the Nigerian traditions oh, yeah. in that house yet? Oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Like my mom, my, she speaks to me in English, but for the most part, it's Yoruba. Like, she'll mix it up. Um, ate Nigerian foods, all that. Like growing up, the culture was a strong, strong part of us. We never mm -hmm. lost that. What type of food? What was your favorite food? So, stew, fish, plantain, and rice. That's, That's it right, there. It right I could, there. I could eat that every single day. My mom cook, whips up that tilapia with the, with the <laughs> oh yeah, I could eat that all day. Can you cook? Yeah. Oh yeah. Which, which, is that is that where how you get in your bag? That yeah, that's oh, too fish? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. how I do it. I mean, I learned a lot from my mom, like her being in the kitchen, whatever, and like whenever she had to go to work, I had to go in the kitchen sometimes and cook. So mm. yeah, I know I know how to do a little something. So that's how you impress the ladies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get them over here with their hair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it depends. It depends. <laughs> Tell me about when you got to New York. How old were you? I was ten when we first moved to New York. Um, it was cold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we moved in April, so it was probably like 50 degrees, yeah. 45 degrees, nothing too crazy now for me, but when I first moved there, I'd never been in weather under 90 degrees, you know what <laughs> I mean? So when I, sh when I showed up, it was like, you know, we're at JFK and I was cold. I had this little jacket <laughs> on me, my brother, my mom, and I'm freezing. Um, that was the biggest thing was the culture shock. Mm -hmm. And then when I moved, obviously, it's just different. 
Uh, you got to get used to it. People talk differently. You had a thick accent when I first moved. So, mm -hmm. you know, the kids, they get on you for that and all that. So, but yeah, it was definitely a big culture shock. But New York is a huge part of me. It's a huge part of my life. Like, I spent a lot of good years there and I learned a lot growing up in New York. What was it like being Nigerian, like you said, with accent? Everybody's making fun of you. Like, what's that like in Brooklyn? East New York, Brooklyn, yeah. New York? Like oh, no, nah, it's tough. It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy for sure, but I'm, I like, People make fun of me and stuff, but I'm, I'm someone that thinks like I could adjust the situation. So they make fun of me, I make fun of them back. You know yeah. what I mean? So that's how I made a lot of my friends. And once you play sports as well, you make a lot of friends that way. So you, you get used to it. So where does the, the soccer journey start for you in New York? Before that, honestly, um, since, I was a, since I was a kid, I mean, soccer is a huge part of the Nigerian culture. I mean, that's the biggest sport there. Mm -hmm. I mean, every other sport is non-existent essentially, but um, as a kid, like my older brother, he played soccer as well, and I always looked up to him. So whatever he did, I wanted to do. Kind of the younger brother running around, yeah. and we started playing from when we were kids. We joined a team when we were in Nigeria, um, and then we moved to America. So the first couple of years when we first moved, we actually both didn't play because we didn't really know anyone, and we were still getting to figure out everything. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, we started playing. My brother met someone at school, linked them up with a team, and we started playing for a team called the Brooklyn Patriots at the time. Playing for the Brooklyn Patriots and. Uh, my brother actually, like, my uncle got us a laptop one time. We were just, like, on a laptop messing around, and an ad came up for, like, the New York Red Bull Academy. Mm -hmm. And it was like, oh, they're standing up the academy, like, joining the academy. My brother was like, yo, we should go try out. Mm -hmm. And we went there, tried out Giant Stadium at the time, and the rest is history since then. Made the team and just kind of been taking it step by step since then. Man, that's crazy. So you just started killing from the jump. Uh, not really from the jump. It was tough, like when I first got there, because a lot of the kids, a lot of the kids were like ahead of me, and they, because I took a couple years off and I didn't play, so mm -hmm. they were playing and they developed a little bit more than me. So it took me a little bit of time to adjust, but like after being in our environment for like a year, then I started doing my thing. How do you compare Nigerian football to mm -hmm. American soccer? Oh, it's, I think there's more resources here in America, which makes for better development of players. But I think there's definitely more raw talent in Nigeria. Um, and it's just kind of like you play, you play on a whim, it's just survival of the fittest. Well, here, everything is a little bit more cultured. Um, you, you, there's academies, the resources aren't matched, uh, second to none, honestly. Um, so you get a lot of kids. There's more of a system here in developing players when Nigeria is just kind of like talent everywhere and whoever makes it, makes it. Hmm. Would you say that Nigerian, Nigeria is better at soccer? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, close, yeah. Right? For me, I always get to argue with my friends and all my teammates <laughs> who are American. I'm like, yo, we're way better than you guys. But the American national team is good though. So yeah, yeah, yeah. the men they are... they're getting better. Yeah. They get. I think they got a good group of like young players that, that could potentially take the take the country to the next level. So yeah. we'll see how it pans out. The, the women next... are official. Oh yeah, the women are. Really good. <laughs> They've always been good. They've always been good. What's your earliest sports memory or your earliest soccer memory? I should ask. Mm. Um. Oh, that's a good question. I never really thought about that. Mm -hmm. I think, so one time, this is in Nigeria, back, back, back. Um, we were playing on the streets, and a lot of times when you play, if you ask every African that's played on the streets and just played on the road without shoes, they, you always get this cut around your toe. You get this big cut, because when you go kick the ball, you kick into the ground. It's a common thing. Everyone knows it. And uh, the first, first time we were out there playing, I was playing on the streets, kind of like unsupervised, and my mom wasn't there, and I cut my toe, and I was like, bawling, crying, but I still really, really wanted to play, and I just went in the house, wrapped it real quick, and came back playing, and my mm. mom came outside, and my toes bleeding, and she was all pissed off. She's like, oh, no, you can't play anymore, but you just couldn't keep me away from it, you know, kind of thing. That was kind of the mentality. You probably keep that toughness with you today as a pro, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. I try to. I try mm -hmm. to. It's a big part of me being tough, being aggressive, and, like, it's a big part of my game as well. Wow, man, that's, that's crazy to hear, like, playing a sport, anything. Like, me as a little kid playing ball or something, barefoot, yeah. like... What do you take from that? It's just, it's just you, you love the game so much that nothing will stop you. Like sometimes, even if we didn't have balls, we'll make like, get newspapers, wrap it up and tape, like anything to kick around, just whatever you have, you make sure you want to kick that ball and express yourself. Cause it's, it's a way to express yourself and get away with whatever is, whatever is going on. Your mother was very supportive of your soccer journey or was she like, yo, I don't care about sports, man. You got to hit these books. Yeah, it was definitely the books. <laughs> <laughs> Any Nigerian to tell you how yeah. important education is for us. I mean, there, there was a time where my mom kind of was like, 
I don't know if I want you to play, like I want you to focus on school. But as time went on and she just saw the passion in me for the game, she was like, you know, I can't stop it. So I got to I gotta support it. But she she knows nothing about soccer. Like she yeah, doesn't yeah. even really pay attention, yeah. honestly. That's usually how it goes. Yeah, yeah. So were you like a really good student? You had to keep a certain grade point average to make sure yeah, she was I, playing? I, I mean, school has always been something that, that was a big part of me. Uh, high school, I probably didn't do as well as I should have. But mm -hmm. college, I, I did really well. And like, I, I, took, I took school very seriously. That's what's up. You end up at, in Jersey mm -hmm. at Seton Hall. Yeah. Take me back to those days. Yeah, it was cool. It was dope. I mean, I went to school because I graduated high school earlier than most kids. So I went to college. My freshman year, I was 16 years old. Whoa. Yeah. So I was like one, if not the youngest kid on campus. What um, was that like? It was crazy. It was, it was, I had to grow up real quick. 16? Yeah, I had to grow up real quick. Um, adjust to everything being on your own and figuring out schedules, but it fit me well. I've mm -hmm. always been a kid that could kind of adapt. So I just matured quick and took on whatever challenges that it presented, but it was cool. How's it like interacting with the 18 to 22 year olds on campus when you're 16? Yeah, I mean, you just, the thing with me is I've always kind of been around older people just because playing soccer or whatever, like, you you just you just mingle with people out of your age group, so mm. it was it wasn't that difficult for me. Okay, hmm. And same thing same thing on the soccer field. I'm sure like yeah. it was just an easy transition for you. Yeah, 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 for sure. It was, it was. So tell me about the transition from going from Seton Hall mm. to now being a pro. Oh, it was t I think that was probably the toughest transition. Um, going from college to like yo, this is my job, and this is all that matters. Mm -hmm. uh, and you start competing with guys. You start competing with guys that have families that have a different motivation and they come out every day and they demand the best out of you every single day. And that level of consistency and focus, I think that's the toughest things like all rookies deal with their first year, being able to show up because everyone can show up and have a good game once in a while. Mm -hmm. But the biggest challenge is can you show up every single training session mm -hmm. and every game and bring your A game every single day for mm -hmm. 10 months, 10 months out of 12 months. That, that's the biggest thing, I think, in transitioning from the college game to the pros. <sighs> So the journey starts, the pro journey starts in New York for you. Yeah, New York, right? With Red the Bull. Red Bulls. Mm -hmm. Then where does it go? Or tell me, tell me about the, the beginning process to where it took you. Yeah, so um, I was actually at school at Seton Hall, um, and I got invited to preseason with the Red Bulls after playing academy with them. So I went there, and I was still in school, actually, because mm -hmm. the training facility was only 30, a 30-minute 30 drive from campus. So still lived in school. I was taking six classes, and like I was in preseason doing everything, and I signed, signed with them, obviously, while I was still in school. So that was really tough because I had six classes. I still had to get this degree. My mom was like, yo, you got to graduate <laughs> before you do anything. Exactly, exactly. You got to graduate. <laughs> so it was like back and forth, like wake up in the morning, have class, go to training, drive back to campus. So it was, it was kind of crazy. But then graduated, obviously, in the middle of the season. Things settled down, had a good year, but unfortunately I got released after my first year at Red Bull, mm -hmm. which was tough because all I known was Red Bull, like coming up from the academy and like I was that that club had shaped me and it's still like I'm still a fan of the club, you know? Yeah. There's no hard feelings towards that. And then after that What's it like being released when you sit down with the GM and he tells you we no longer need your services? Yo, anymore? it is it's probably the toughest feeling in the world. It's probably one of the toughest things I've ever had to deal with. Man. Yeah, it was tough. You you kind of get discouraged in that moment. Oh, I'm absolutely, sure. absolutely. I think my, my head was down, and I remember calling my brother and telling him, yo, like, I just got released, and telling my mom, and everybody was like, nobody was expecting it, honestly. I wasn't expecting it myself. Mm -hmm. um, and, but the next day, we got up, called my brother, and we went to go train. Mm -hmm. uh, that, 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 was the, that was a way for me to get my mind off things and kind of release whatever emotions I was feeling at the time. What's next? Then I go, I signed for Philadelphia, Bethlehem still, so Philadelphia's team, and... Uh, I played there for a year and I had a really good year. I liked it there. I think I developed, um, but I wanted to move on. Uh, I kind of wanted some different, uh, the, the direction the club was going was a bit different than what I wanted, mm -hmm. which is okay. And then I got traded from there to North Carolina. Played in North Carolina, it was my first experience at the South and everybody was telling me like, yo, the South is different, whatever, whatever. And as soon as I came here, it was just so different. Tell Everything. me about that because it's, I had to say I dealt with the same thing being yeah. from New York and going to the South. Oh yeah, the first thing you notice is a lot slower. That's the first thing. Everybody moves at snail pace. I'm like, yo, yeah, let's bro. go. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> Everything. Oh slow. my god. Yeah, fast food is slow food down south. I'm telling you. I tell. I was telling my teammates the other day. I'm like, yo, you could be at a. Red, this is the first place I know you could be at a red light. And you sit there, and the light will turn green and go back red. And if you don't move, there's cars behind you, and they won't they nah, won't, won't honk. Beep. They won't beep. 
<laughs> there won't be. It's like everyone is just chilling, and there's that's the thing. And like people are much nicer down south, I think, than New York. Yeah. In New York, everybody's like, "Yo, I'm trying to get gotta whatever get to I need bag. to get." Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I gotta get. I gotta get everything done. Yeah. Um, people here want to sit down, have conversations, and talk to you. Uh, but yeah, it was definitely a culture shock. It was different. Um, it's a lot less diverse down south as well too. Mm -hmm. But yeah. you get used to that. You got black and you got white. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's all it is. Like people aren't coming together as much as uh, as New York or like in the north. But yeah. um, but I got used to it. Adjusted, lived there, played there for a season, and um, got wind up coming here because one of my teammates was the coach here, and he thought it would be a good fit for me. Mm. And I came here to Nashville, and I've been here for this is my second season. Okay, and you've been liking Nashville. Yeah, it's been cool. It's been treating me well for sure. I like it. You got a favorite Nigerian spot that you hit out here? Um, I've actually I've never been to. So for me, it's tough to go to like Nigerian restaurants and that, just because like my mom, my mom has already set the bar so high that yeah. if I go to a restaurant, it's not it's not gonna taste the same. So yeah. I don't want to ruin that, you yeah. know? Yeah, and you cook yourself. Yeah, so you and got I that. cook so. Yeah. Okay, so so what's what's life like for you in Nashville? It's cool. It's cool. I mean. Training. Um, I'm actually in school right now, online, I'm getting my master's. What? So it's, yeah. So it's training, come home, hit the book, study, and that's it, it, usually. Where are you studying and what are you studying? I'm studying. I'm getting my MBA in marketing. Okay. Yeah, and I'm doing it um, at LSU online. Mm. So, yeah. What's next? What's next in that area? Like, what you trying to do with that? Um, eventually, I mean, it's just kind of like, I'm 25 right now, peak of my career. Um, things are going well, but it's always good to kind of have a backup plan and think about life after sports. Uh, and for me, I want to work in marketing, digital marketing mm. specifically. Um, I like to be a director of marketing for a company at some point. So I figured why not further my education now while I'm playing. So when I'm done playing, I have that yeah. and like, I can move, kind of like get into that world. I love that. Go get it. Yeah. Yes, sir. What would you say has been your biggest inspiration throughout your career? Throughout my career? My brother. Yeah? Definitely my older brother, yeah. I Why think, is that? Because he, he was the one that got me playing soccer in the first place. Um, and obviously, he never, got the, he never got the chance to play professional. Um, so for him, he's always kind of been like my inspiration and my rock, like my motivation. And he'll watch my games and tell me what I need to do better. And like every off season, I go and I will train together and he'll give me tips. So he's kind of, kind of been like, my life coach in a sense, you know, he's mm. been kind of like that father figure for me. So when I play, I feel like it's playing not just for myself, but for him, my whole family. And when I wear my last name on my back, like that means a lot to me. Wow, that's real. Yeah. That brotherly love, man. I love yes, to sir. hear that. Yes, sir. What would you say is the biggest misconception about Nigerians? I think... Um, probably we go both ways. I think, I think a lot of people look at us as probably arrogant mm -hmm. in a sense because of the way we are about our culture and, and the way we feel about our country and, and the things we do and sometimes you could people get this mis misconception of like whatever Nigerians do we think is the best mm -hmm. so I think that for sure and two I think not only Nigeria but like the whole of Africa this whole image of poverty and there yes there's poverty but there's poverty everywhere mm -hmm. but I think that that's the image that's always been portrayed and like put on the TV screens right. here in America and abroad is that there's nothing but dirt and in Nigeria or in Africa, but yeah. that's that's not the case. It's definitely not the case. Definitely not I got to make my first trip out there. I went to Rwanda and Congo, mm -hmm. and like I had that in my mind, like right. okay, it's gonna be this, but it wasn't. It wasn't even close to yeah, that. This yeah. beautiful green oh, place, yeah. absolutely, feels and smells and looks so rich. Like yeah. it's crazy how we we get this portrayal of it mm -hmm. on TV, and yeah. it's not even close to that. Man. Yeah, I mean, but if that's all you see and that's all you grow, in, uh, all you grow up seeing, that's all you can put in your mind until yeah, exactly. somebody tells you otherwise, or you actually go and you get a first-hand experience. Yeah. If you can holla at a young Nigerian boy right now, mm -hmm. over there, nine years old. Yeah. He, uh, he wants to play soccer. He wants mm -hmm. to go do his thing, has no idea what to do. What's your advice to him? Believe in yourself. Mm. My biggest thing is believing in yourself because it's easy. It's easy to get caught up and looking at other people and thinking, oh, yo, he got this, he got that. Don't worry about that. Think about yourself because everything starts internally. I think if you believe in yourself and you work hard, you get sky's the limit. You could get wherever. I said, one thing is believing in yourself, but the other thing is you got to match it. You got to match it with your work. The work ethic. Yep. 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 There's one thing wanting something and there's another thing going out and getting it. Sure. Yeah, man. That's so real. Yeah. The, the, like, the belief in yourself, man, is. So much more important than anything else. Oh, like absolutely. you said, it starts with that. But like, same thing with praying. You got to go act on it, man. Yes, you got to go get it. Yes, sir. Yes, I sir. I love that. I can mm -hmm. see, I can feel that in your vibe, but that's you all the way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Is there anything left that you still want to accomplish in your life? For soccer or just life in general? Life. Mm-hmm. That's a tough question. I feel like there's still a lot. I mean, I'm still young. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, yeah, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things I want to accomplish. Starting a family, mm-hmm. uh, things like that. And I definitely want to, I want to give back. I want to give back. When I, when I get to the point in my life where I feel like I've, I've accomplished most of my goals, I want to give back. I've had a couple of ideas for things because I'm sure you heard of my high school, Thomas Jefferson, and cool. there's tremendous athletes that have come out of there. Tremendous, mm-hmm. like good basketball players, good football players. But unfortunately, they never get the opportunity to go play Division I or, yeah. or, or even wind up getting that chance to make a professional. Um, I had the idea of like kind of, because I went back there after my rookie year to give a speech to the kids and like kind of talk to them and tell them about my journey and see if I can inspire at least just one kid. If I can inspire one kid, then I'll feel accomplished. Yeah. Um, and it was, I, I don't think there's enough prep for kids uh, in inner city schools mm-hmm. to make it to division one and like kind of like SAT prep and that kind of thing. So they mm-hmm. wind up getting stuck in the whole NCAA clearinghouse and they wind up going to JUCOs. I'm sure you heard about that journey and they get lost yeah. in the system. So. Yeah. For me personally, I would like to start like a mentor mentorship program where you can have athletes like myself who, who've done well educationally and on, on the field as well, um, kind of help mentor these kids and tutor them and get them ready and prep them to be like, yo, your sport's one thing, but education matters just as well. So when you go to school, first to get you into these Division One programs, and then when you get to school, it'd be like, school shouldn't be just a side thing. You should focus on it just as much as you focus on your sport. Wow. So that's how you see yourself making a Nigeria impact back home in Nigeria. Yeah, yeah, and that too. Um, and yeah, back home, definitely want to help kids and provide for kids because I know it was tough for us. Like times we didn't have cleats or you watch TV, you're like, yo, I want the cleats Messi got or Ronaldo yeah, yeah, got yeah. and there's no access to it. So um, definitely doing donations and collecting cleats and balls and things like that. Maybe eventually, like one of my teammates had a really good idea. Like he, he has a... Um, he has a tournament that he holds back home for kids in South Africa. Mm-hmm. And like he takes boots and jerseys and all that stuff, just holds a tournament, gives them proper training, like something like that. I think eventually I would want to do because mm. that, that inspired me just to see this, the smiles that he puts on a bunch of kids' faces back yeah. home. I would love to do that in Nigeria as well. It's so funny to hear you say that because I have a nonprofit called Kicking It For A Cause. Mm. We use sneakers as a vehicle to break down social barriers. Okay. I would love to be involved with this cleat donation any way that I can. Oh yeah, absolutely. We're gonna exchange information mm-hmm. and we're gonna, we gotta make that work. Oh, yeah. like, you we'll got my mind work. racing right yeah, now. Yeah, 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 we'll we make it work. gotta make that work, sure. man. We'll like, make it work this, a, this a New York thing yes, right sir. here. Yes, sir, yes, sir. So I, I gotta make that yes, work, Yes, sir, yes, sir, we'll make it work. Bro, it's been a true pleasure. Oh, yeah, it's been a pleasure. I know that you're gonna truly impact those kids' lives here and over there, bro. Yeah, like, the man, sitting down with you right now has been a true, true pleasure, Bolu. Appreciate it. Thank you for doing this, bro, Yeah, yeah, yeah. For Bolu. I'm your man, Kosizi. We in Tennessee. We out of here, baby. Yes, sir. On the next episode of Africans in Sports. I didn't even know. In that moment, I didn't know when I started crying. My mind couldn't comprehend what just happened. You know, it was really bad. My first basket was against my own team. It was like, it was almost a flip of a coin for them to let me stay in America.